Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Krishna. I'm a product manager and a product evangelist and also a product engineer at Cloud Physics. I'm going to talk about how do you troubleshoot storage performance and configuration issues using uh, Cloud Physics. So with that, I'm going to switch over to the, the browser window. And in particular, I'm going to talk about two uh, storage specific uh, card. One is we call as data store contention. So Irfan talked about, in the technology deep dive, Irfan gave this example of how do you do root cost analysis using uh, the data store, uh, all the performance data that we collect. So one very simple thing that you can do is a correlation of events from multiple sources. <clears throat> so today, if you look at data store, it's a shared entity. A data store is not uh, owned by a single host because that host A will see data store, hundreds of other hosts is also going to see the same data store. The IOS which is happening in the data store is also coming from multiple different ESX hosts. So you cannot go on a host by host basis to query and look at the performance of a particular data store. What we need to do is you have to aggregate this information from this individual ESX host and then look at what is the cumulative I.O. that is going into the data store. Once you have a global perspective, then you can quickly identify who is the culprit and who is the victim uh, <coughs> in, your, in, your, in your shared infrastructure. So for that, what we did is a very simple tool here where you, again, you select your vCenter, you select your data store cluster, and you select your, uh, let me pick a different one. Okay, so back to the same one, but anyway, so you, you pick a data store, and what you, have, you can do is you can pick a time period in the last 24 hour uh, time window, and you just click on that uh, time window. So now what we have actually done is, for this particular time period, who is the top contributors, and that is shown in, in the bottom. And this, the contributor list will auto rearrange based on different time zones, your different time periods you're going to select. So if I cl click on this one, you might see a different, see now the, the VM has flipped. Now you see a different one. So you can quickly identify who contributed most amount of IO on any particular time period on your given data store. Now this is just a start, right? Now you can obviously do more interesting correlation and we, we collect all of this data today. Like for instance, we can find out when backups are kicking in. We can find out when you're cloning your VMs. We can find out uh, when your uh, storage vMotion is uh, kicking in. And we can correlate, correlate those events along with this data store. Because these are task and events data that is happening in vCenter, but you have to parse them. You need to understand which data store it's actually doing the I.O. And then once we can do the mapping, we can not only say which VMs are contributing I.O. to this data store, but what are the other events that are happening in your data store. So think of it like very similar to Google uh, finance charts. Like when the stock ticker price goes up and down, you know at various points why it went up and down. They mark events on the, for the day, which uh, so we can do the same thing for for the data stores. You can use also memory management uh, when, for example, uh, you have some uh, uh, swapping or uh, uh, ballooning that uh, can also. Yes, so all of these manifest itself as performance counters, right? So it's just a matter of mapping the right set of performance counters which are going to affect the data store performance. So this is where, again, domain expertise comes really uh, into play because if you know you are swapping, not only do you need to know you are swapping, but also need to know on which data store you are swapping because a VM could be configured for a different data store for swapping. So this is where you have to do all this relationship mapping uh, really comes into play. And our platform has that power to do that kind of uh, analysis. Is there any advantage to changing the frequency and level of performance counters that we're gathering today out of the default build? Or do you guys have any sort of suggestions as to sort of get better info to feed into cloud physics? Yes, so one great thing about our tool today is uh, the performance data that we are collecting is the highest granularity that we are collecting. And we are collecting all performance data irrespective of what is your vCenter stats level is. So we have designed it in a way that we can actually query performance data, not worrying about what the vCenter's collection interval or what is the vCenter's uh, stats uh, interval is. And the other thing is, uh, the way we have designed data collection for performance is so non-intrusive. 
that you wouldn't even notice a load on vCenter. So we know our, uh, the API so um, intimately that we're able to design our uh, observers in a such a fashion that you're not going to see any load on vCenter at all. Other aspect of our platform is vCenter has one fundamental problem with storing performance data is the growth of data. As time progresses, they cannot really keep up with the growth of data, so they have to roll up the data. When you're rolling up the data, you're losing fidelity. And the roll-up gets worse and worse as the time progresses. So first one week, it's a roll-up, and there's a six months, it's a roll-up. So you lose a lot of information, which is very essential for doing root cost analysis, very essential for doing pattern matching. <coughs> but since we have a cloud infrastructure in the back end, the data that we collect, we don't lose any fidelity. We collect the finest clarity of the data, and we archive every data that we collect. So we could have like probably years worth of performance data at the lowest granularity possible for every counter that is available in, in vCenter. How much data can, uh, can you cache, for example, if the upstream uh, connection to internet uh, is uh, temporarily down? Uh, how many time can you handle? Uh, so the, the observer appliance is basically a streaming appliance. It has a local hard disk, uh, and local hard disk is our temporary caching. So if you lose network connectivity, we cache it. And uh, so whatever the disk space you allocated, that's the cache size. So how, how long do you keep the data? <clears throat> Forever. Forever? <laughs> really? Yes. We're all that's why we are a big data <laughs> company. <laughs> Okay, so this is a uh, card that we created, right? How about you doing your own custom analysis? So, um, in previously in Card Builder, we only had configuration data, but now we had it performance data into the Card Builder. So, I'm going to show you a quick query on, let's say, let's do data store. Data store name, the volume type. And what else you want to know? You want to know the UID. You want to know the VMFS version number. And then you say, I want to know the performance characteristic of this data store. So, so I can type, um, actually I need to type the host. Okay, first let's do the simple query. So this gives you, List of all the data store, what volume type it is, and what's the data store UID. Now, on top of this, you can say read, virtual disk read rate. So what we have, I dragged and dropped here is the virtual machine disk read rate, and our primary object is a data store. So now our inference engine automatically knows you're only talking about the VMs, which is on this particular data store and we do the mapping for you here. Actually, for this one, we don't have a performance data. Let me quickly switch to um, this card. Yeah, so this gives you a data store read and write uh, metrics. So this is your custom performance uh, data. The cool thing about this is now you can query performance data based on filter conditions. You can not only filter based on the configuration of your data store, but you're also planning to add a, few, a feature where you can filter based on the performance characteristics itself. You can say show only me data store where the average latency is greater than 50 milliseconds and plot the chart for me. So that is something we can do. And the cool thing is you can save this data, export it into CSV, PNG. So previously people used to write Power CLI scripts for extracting performance data. And if you're really not good at writing Power CLI scripts, uh, you're going to trash your vCenter. Now all of that is gone, so. So that concludes uh, this section. Uh, any questions? Is there a way to capture like a hunk of data? An interesting one would be, say, like an SSD versus you know non-SSD workload, same VM, where we actually literally move it and we can do an A/B test on it, and then take that, you know, 24-hour window. Can we like sort of snapshot that 24 hours, export it, move it to yes. a separate workload, and then absolutely you can do it. 
Um, yeah, so using the card builder again, you can do the same thing. Right, and then when you go back and capture the performance data, you just set that window of time that you're looking over. And, yes. And how long, like obviously, effectively, you're saying we keep it forever. How long could we view? So currently, we support uh, 24 hours worth of data. On, but for many of our analysis on the back end, we look at like six months worth of data. Right. Uh, Rafan said earlier that uh, you know, most of the time when you see a performance uh, complaint or issue in whether it's VMware or even in Hyper-V, um, you find out that it's storage sooner or later. So just stepping back, why don't I just monitor my storage more than go with uh, a model like this that's looking at the whole thing? Um, I've got great storage tools to monitor the load of my storage. Why do I need cloud physics? So I think uh, John mentioned this in the beginning of the talk. I think storage tools provide a view purely from their backend perspective. They don't have knowledge of which VMs are sitting on which data store, and they don't even have access to what are the properties of those VMs. So, so that's where I think we are very unique because we are at the intersection of virtualization and storage. And we can provide visibility on both sides, on the virtualization side as well as on the storage side. Uh, in the data store scenario. And there's also the I.O. Blender problem. All right, it's known as the I.O. Blender problem, where all the, the virtual machines are issuing I.O. to the same LUN or the same NFS device. What you see on the other side is that blended I.O., and it's very hard to do that analysis there. Yes. It's actually much easier to do that analysis <coughs> before the blending happens, and that's really the, you know, what Krishna was trying to show. Before yeah. the blending, what is, what is the effect? Yeah, classic example is uh, multiple sequential streams typically appears as a random stream in the back end, mm -hmm. but since we can track I.O. at the VM level, we can say these are the two VMs we're doing sequential, and we can even do recommendations saying move them to different data stores. That is something the data store, the, the back end area cannot do it. So is it possible to get my data back in my vCenter web clients, like with a plug plugin or something? Like which data? The interface you got here, right? Mm -hmm. To have an, a plugin for my vCenter. So I don't know if vCenter has a Chrome plugin, but if you have a Chrome plugin, <laughs> then it's plugged yeah. into vCenter. Um, um, we want to get context information is, is a really important thing. I want to have a yeah. have a link in there that shows me this vCenter's We cards. We have had people asking this. Um, we were uh, we are thinking about putting a plugin interface where you can feed, feed back the information back, but as of today, we don't have. But we are definitely interested in uh, yeah, looking into the direction. Yeah.